like the intro music and this is brother rob wilson of kingdom life peoria and i have recently come under the conviction and into the awareness that i need to i talk kingdom life all the time and you might someone might feel i know someone someone always gets offended someone always always never asks for explanation or a revelation you know in the intro it says Preaching the kingdom of God versus cultural Christianity or churchianity, okay? What I want to uh, express in, in I believe, in the inerrancy of scripture and this, the, the remaining relevance of every jot and every tittle of the word of God. Um, I don't believe God has changed. I believe in the word of God where it says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I've recently come under the conviction that it's possible to preach the gospel of salvation and to give the good news of how to be saved without doing what it says Jesus did. He preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so there, there's, there's only one gospel, but there is, um, I believe, a misunderstanding of all that the gospel includes, and there's a there's a um, there's a missing paradigm or lens of kingdom as we go through our daily um, routines and rituals and programs and mo of earth and culture. in in my heart and my conviction, culture has infected the gospel of the kingdom it's infected us to such an extent where kingdom people um, citizens of an actual kingdom the kingdom of god have begun to operate and to move and live and have their being and be more affected by culture than the king of the kingdom and um i, I want you to i, I want you to see if uh, test and weigh what I say and see if it hits you whatsoever and I have some scriptures to share with you today and um, I want to share these scriptures with you and see what you think when we're born into you know this ministry Kingdom Life Peoria is um, based in Peoria Illinois of the United States and even born in the country we often don't all agree come into agreement on what it means to be a citizen of an individual city or of a state or even of a nation everybody comes up with their own idea of what it means to be an american and some of those ideas are strained at best and some of them are a little extreme at best where uh, what it means to be an american is actually um, putting the nation before the, the needs and the aspirations and the will of the people. Um, so, but I want to tell you that when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, and oftentimes I use the term disciple or follower of Christ, um, before I would use the term Christianity, only for the fact of the matter of clarification and exposition, because Jesus never called anyone a Christian. This is a later title that was put on those who followed Jesus Christ. Um, so this was this was a man-made title, not a God-given title. And when you say that word, it stirs uh, a different definition in the minds of every every person. And what happens is you begin to um, think of yourself as a member of a social human organization more than you think of yourself as a person as one individual connected to uh, the person of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God so the affiliation is greater to the cultural definition of Christianity and group cult more than an affiliation with Christ Christ didn't call us to make people who belong to a cult but make make people who followed him and belonged to one leader and one kingdom and one nation that is global 
a global nation. Peter said, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you might declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So I'm going to give a series of teachings that is going to be kingdom focused. And if you see here right above me, okay, it's going to flip the script on a, on the way what people value, what people focus on. And we're going to, everything in the kingdom of God operates in reverse of the way the kingdom of the world operates. Okay. One thing that's obvious um, in the calling of David, when Samuel the prophet was going to go and anoint David to be the next king, Samuel picked Eliab, who was the oldest son of Jesse. He didn't get away with picking him, but that was his first choice because he was the biggest, he was the oldest, he was the strongest, he was the most outgoing. And then he, Samuel went through all the brothers of David and eventually came to the point where he, God stopped him and said, um, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So one of the things that's flipped right now in cultural Christianity is people who literally judge and view people simply by outward appearance and not the character and the likeness of the person of Jesus Christ. We are a visual people. <laughs> and I, I included myself in that because I have to constantly fight against what things look like on the outside or on the surface or what they are in appearance versus what they are in content. Amen. So I'm not going to hold this up too long telling you about this. I'm just going to do it and it will be part of a playlist that is on the love agenda. And the reason why the YouTube channel is called the love agenda is because that's what the gospel of the kingdom is all about. It's about the agenda of love. For God is love. So I'm going to bring up, um, before I bring up the scriptures I want to share, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that you have a way and you have a will for us on earth. And you came preaching, Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. There is so much more in our salvation than what we have realized, understood, or even been, uh, has even been revealed to us in in cultural Christianity or church is business as usual as it's been done. It is the kingdom of God that you are wanting to build in each and every one of us, oh God. Help us, bless us, uh, bless this word and bless everyone who hears it, to hear it uh, with ears to hear, with an open and vulnerable heart and give us an expanded understanding, a better revelation as your word says, what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has conceived the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But you have revealed it to us by your spirit, Lord. Help us to see in a greater way. Help us to hear what we haven't heard before. And help us to conceive with our mind the kingdom as you would have us manifest it in our personal lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I'm going to move right along here. I've got some scriptures written down. I don't think I've got them pulled up. Let me go to my screen share. And I'm going to go to Mark. Oops. I'm going to go to the first chapter of Mark. I meant to bring this up a little better than I did. So please forgive me. Mark. And I'm going to go to the first chapter in the 14th verse. I've gotten this written down. Uh, and just so, Jesus begins his ministry, and let's look at what it says. After Jesus was baptized, it says, now after John was arrested. John was arrested shortly after he baptized Jesus, and Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. Let's go back here. Baptism of Jesus. Jesus tempted during in between these times, John the Baptist was arrested because he went to Herod and and uh, uh, and he rebuked him for um, his marriage to his. I think it was his brother's wife. Herod was dirty and foul and John the Baptist didn't hold nothing back. OK, there wasn't any worry in those days um, 
Uh, there was no shame in uh, the game for rebuking sin in leadership, unlike today. We're not supposed to say that. We're not supposed to think that. But it says here, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. Amen. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. This is the English Standard Version. I want to bring up the American Standard Version. And... Mark 1, 14. I thought I marked all these. I think I did it in on another computer. So, it says here, Now after John was delivered up, he was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe in the gospel. And the King James Version is... So that we're looking at all these versions. A lot of times people get hung up on versions more than they even understanding and appreciating the spirit. Now it says here, what, I'm going to go right to Jesus. The time is fulfilled. There's no more waiting. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Amen. King James Version, English Standard Version, American Standard Version. And I wanted to share with you Luke 17, 20, okay? Luke 17, 20. So Jesus' message was not the kingdom is coming, but the kingdom is here. The kingdom is right. Luke 17, 20. You'll see this here in, a, here in just a moment. And I was really... Thank you, Jesus. We are still in the King James Version. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, when is the kingdom coming? When is the Messiah coming? When is the consolation of Israel coming? Jesus was called the consolation of Israel. Um, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You're not going to see it. <laughs> you're not going to see it coming when it comes. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, uh, let me highlight the rest of this. Let me go ahead and highlight this. And he said that, and he said unto his disciples, so to the Pharisees who demanded to know when the kingdom of God was coming, he says, it's not going to come by your careful observation. You're going to say, there it is over there. Here it is over here. And you have people right now telling people, go to this conference, go to this revival, go here, go there. God is over there doing something. God is over here doing something. If you want to get a little more specific about where the kingdom of God is, it's in here, and it's in here. And he said to his disciples, um, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them. The kingdom, the, the kingdom is over at Bethel Church. The kingdom is over at um, the Potter's House. The kingdom is over... I could name off some local churches where they think it's going. It's really going on over there. And Jesus said, those times are going to come. <laughs> see, see there that you go not after them, nor follow them. For as lightning that lighteth out of the one part of under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first... Must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation? And it says, it says in the, that's what happened to him in his generation. He was rejected by that generation, but he's been rejected by subsequent generations ever since then. And just so you know, and we see, uh, I'm going to go down here and highlight a little bit more. I wasn't planning on doing this, so thank you for your patience. 
And it says here that, let me go up here. It says here, don't follow them as the lightning goes from the east to the west um, and the other parts of the heaven. It's going to be that way when the Son of Man comes again. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, and it says here, Noe, uh, so shall it be in the, also in the days of the Son of Man, when he returns in his second coming, when he brings the fullness of the kingdom. Now, but there is a kingdom dispensation that's here now within the life of every believer in Jesus. See, when, when, when you believe on Christ, the kingdom of God is deposited within you, okay? That's the seed of your faith, the, the receiving of Jesus Christ into your life as Lord and Savior for the remission of sins, but for growth in discipleship as a kingdom disciple of Jesus Christ. It says here, as it was in the days of Noah, shall be it in the days of the Son of Man. They did, they did eat and they drank and they married wives and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, because I just don't like saying Noah, and the floods came and destroyed them all. This is what Jesus said it was going to be like when he comes again. It's going to be just like the days of Noah. It's going to be that people are eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day of Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they will, they did eat and they drank and they brought, they bought and they sold and they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. If this doesn't make us see uh, that things are ripe for Jesus' second coming, it is a ripe time for the second coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to bring up one more scripture here. Matthew 13, 31. 13 and 31. Where is God wanting to build at? Where is God wanting to do his work at? And this is what um, people are trying to build, just like Jesus was talking about. People are trying to talk about building buildings and closing down church buildings and 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 having to be here and having to be there, having to be uh, part of this this movement. Okay, Jesus is the movement. <laughs> Jesus is the movement. The Word of God in your life is the movement from here to there. It will take you from here to there. The confession of your faith in Christ. And it says here. Uh, let me. He he taught in parables. Uh, uh, a human reality to express a spiritual kingdom truth. And it says here in verse 31, Matthew 13, 31, another parable put he forth unto them, saying the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, a, a seed, okay, a seed. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. Now, where did Jesus say the kingdom of heaven was? Within you, okay? He said in 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 Mark um, 1 and 14, was it? Yeah. Uh, that the kingdom of heaven does not come by your careful observation. You don't say it's over there and over there. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Now he says the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of a mustard seed. Where's the seed? It's within you. It's the word that you heard and believed and kept for the salvation of your soul. It's like a small thing. That, that original message you believed in is small. An oak tree is huge, is enormous. But when it, where did it come from? It came from a seed. Okay, so we hear, we see that the confession of your faith, the receiving of Jesus Christ, is the seed of faith. And it says here, which a man took and sowed in his field. What's, what's his field? Who sowed the seed? Jesus sowed the seed, or the minister who shared the gospel. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. <clears throat> he sowed in his field, not in not in our field, not in your field. 
not in not in a pastor's field. The the field belongs to God, which indeed is the least of all seeds. He said, uh, a mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. So a big thing that happens in your life comes from the beginning of receiving the word of God and receiving Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life, which indeed is, a, is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, okay, when the word that was planted in you is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and it becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. This is what Jesus said, that the message that you hear, um, that, that the gospel of the kingdom comes in seed form. And when you have, when the seed has been planted, it grows and it becomes great. It becomes the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree that the birds of the air come and lodge on the branches thereof. So let me ask you, if the kingdom of God is within you and the seed is planted in the kingdom and, and then it grows. Okay. And the not, not <laughs> this is within you as an individual. Hmm. What would we look like if we're this tree? That when the seed has fully grown, you become this tree. You, you have branches that other living creatures can rest off. You become firm. You become immovable. You become steadfast in the Lord. Amen. You become rooted and grounded in Christ. You become Christ-like. Now, there's a lot of people that are preaching the kingdom of God. And, and they preach nothing but miraculous signs and wonders and supernatural events and supernatural experiences and feelings and and things, things, stuff. Jesus didn't say anything about. Now, I'm not saying those things don't exist, but I'm taking you, I'm going to take you from baby steps um, right now in this message about the kingdom of God. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is where? Within you. As an individual. Not as a collective. Okay? Not as, not as members of a cult. A cultural cult. Not as following rules and regimes and rituals marked down for human observation. Look, look. I, I, belong, to, I belong to a gym that ain't doing anything for me. I haven't been going. I haven't been attending. But they do have sets of rules, okay? They do have uh, codes of conduct written on the wall. Uh, the the you the wipe down the machine when you're done. They do have uh, no use of foul language. Um, no more than thirty minutes on a machine when somebody is waiting. But I'm saying these are the things that exist in any organization: rules and rituals and expectations. Now, so far. What Jesus has talked about is the fact that the kingdom of God does not come outwardly and it's not brought, um, it's not brought to you by where you are, um, where, where you find the seed, where you hear the message, where you receive the message. It's said that it's planted within you and no one else can see it. The Pharisees couldn't see the kingdom of God standing before them. Jesus and receiving him into your life. Um, the good news that that we we were not born in the kingdom of God. You were, Jesus said no one can see this kingdom of God unless they are born again. Amen. No one in the in the world, um, in any nation, is born in the kingdom of God. You're born again into the kingdom of God. In whatever nation you belong to, in whatever culture you belong to, in whatever race you belong to, in whatever economic class you belong to, in whatever educational class you belong to, you are born into the kingdom of God. You are 2 Corinthians 5.17. Last one I'm going to show you. Okay. Last one I'm going to show you. This is a, this is a, always, I go to this over and over again. Second uh, Corinthians 5.17. Uh, 
Oh, I got really messed up on that. Let me do that again. Go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm going to highlight this all for later use. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Okay? To be in Christ, to hear the message of the good news uh, of salvation, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now look, 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 all I want to tell you is prior to Christ, B.C., before Christ, people are a creature of geography. They're a creature of DNA. They're a creature of circumstances. They're a creature of their own experiences and their own practices. But to be born again in Christ, you become a new creature, a kingdom creation, a child of the king. I was bringing this... Um, and it says here, verse 16, I didn't bring that up at first. Wherefore, henceforth, which means from now on, therefore we no longer know we no man after the flesh. Okay? That's not big. So in other words, we henceforth know we no man after the flesh. This is King James Version. <laughs> Let me go to English Standard Version. And I'm just going to go verse 16. I'm doing what I do. This is kingdom teaching. From now on, therefore, that's, that's English Standard Version, we regard no one according to the flesh. So, in the world, if you come from a prominent and wealthy family, you are somebody. Not so in the kingdom. You know, you got no more merit, no more worth, no more value than the poorest man coming from the wrong side of the tracks. Now, do we operate like that? No, we don't. No, it, it doesn't happen. I do. I get in trouble for that all the time. Because I regard no one according to the flesh. Uh, you're, you're not getting any personal promotion because of how much money you're bringing to the table or who your mama and daddy are. Because in the kingdom, guess what? You may be able to pull that off in the world. You may be able to pull that off in the church. You may be able to pull that off in churchianity. Because you give bring the, bring the greatest amount of money. You bring the biggest tithe in the church so you got pull well i'll tell you what the man who allows that is 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 uh seriously um making a mistake because that will come before the lord because that person's will is not the will that is to be done the will that is to be done is the will of the father in heaven okay we regard no one according to the flesh he says even though we once regarded christ according to the flesh what what happens is people who reject jesus or they don't believe in christ they say he was just a man they say he's just a story he's just a fable they don't even believe he was real there is historical evidence that represents that he was an actual man and he came from a certain place he came from nazareth he came from mary and joseph he had some half-brothers and sisters. And so there were people who regarded him as where he came from, as who he came from, as how he came up in no extraordinary way. You know, and this, this is so amazing because we live among a, mon a bunch of people who really care about what they, the appearance of their arrival. Or the appearance of the clothes they wear. Or the uh, the prominence of the job they have. And what this really does is it makes... I work at, in a factory. I work eight hours a day. Sometimes sometimes some overtime. Sometimes weekends. I've been throwing steel. Slinging steel for 23 years almost. Okay. But I've, I've also worked as a janitor. I've been in the military for 10 years. So I worked as a janitor. I worked as equipment operator. ADM. I put roofs on. I've done all kinds of common labor. Guess how our king came? He came as a common man. He came as a carpenter's son. He came from uh, 
a little town called Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem in no extraordinary way. And the reason why we often miss the kingdom of God and what God is saying is because we want him to show up in some extraordinary way. But I've already read the text right here in this that tell us clearly that that's not the way. That's not the way. The people who really know their God, it says the people who know their God will be strong and do exploits. We have it so flipped upside down. We give so much prominence to positions of, um, uh, to people in positions of power. And I'm not saying you don't honor people who are in certain positions, but you don't honor them above anyone else. <laughs> you don't honor them above the janitor. You don't honor them above the the baby, the daycare worker, the teacher, the the um, the the person who cleans out the the porta potties. These are foul jobs, but no one we regard according to the flesh. Though once we regarded Christ that way, we do so no longer. And when any wasn't one is in Christ, okay. Um, and what it said there was, uh, the old has gone, the new has come. They say in the first seven years of childhood that children learn in a form of learning that is almost hypnosis. We all, I have a total of eight kids, okay? Um, but we all have come up in a family where we knew at a certain time, or you, you may, if you have children, you knew at a certain time, they hung on your every word. They watched everything you did. They, they came running up to you, just wanting to jump in your arms. They just, um, you could almost call it worship because everything that they see and hear and are provided or know is coming from you. Okay. You, they, they pretty much have a God complex with their parents, but as they grow older, um, as, as kids grow older, well, we know what they happens in their teens. They listen more to their friends than they do to their parents and da 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 What I'm saying is um, our vision, our view of who we think God is, who we believe God is, what we believe he's like, is often shaped by the images of our parents, the images of who our father was, who our mother was to us. Because these are our God figures in our life. These shape the paradigm through which we see ourselves and so I called it hypnosis, okay? Um, and what, what's really important is this hypnotic learning in childhood is because a child is mesmerized on both their parents, primarily their mother, but also their father. And if, if part of our life is missing, if, we're, um, if our father is absent, absent um, our father gives us an image of approval, of love, of affirmation, of encouragement, of, of delight, okay? But if we have an, un, an unpresent father, then we get fixated on a mother who may or may not be present, okay? Um, and may be limited in how present she can be because she's doing so many things on her own. So what I want to tell you is what Jesus was saying was... Uh, the messages you picked up, verbal and nonverbal, that happened all through, especially those first seven years. These are, are said to be the years that make or break a life, uh, make or break uh, your our, our identity, okay? We can have a real shallow understanding of who we are. And, and the, the greatest subconscious impregnation of who we believe we are happens in the first seven years okay and what happens when you become a new creation born of god okay in the kingdom of god you believe in jesus then you have we have to, the role of breaking off old identities old um the old losses in our heart you know because no one can know that they didn't get what they were supposed to get. Um, 
if they didn't know it was in the package. It was supposed to be in a package. Okay, and there's a package in parenting that are parental responsibilities. One of the one of the playlists we have is um, has about five episodes that deal with um, the love agenda for parenting. What what the what the Bible says are the expectations and requirements of raising a child. You know, what a child is supposed to get. And then we went into an episode called Father Wounds and. We're going to do more work on that playlist, so it'll have a lot of things that do with family. But what Jesus is saying, when you come into the kingdom of God, something happens in here, and something happens in here, and you're supposed to be born again. There's old things are supposed to pass away. Behold, all things become new. You got to look what's in the. You got to know what's in the package. You have to know and understand what's in the package amen i'm gonna look for something real quick um that i i didn't plan on sharing but i and i should sometimes you gotta you gotta do some repetition and some things i did it now i i remember where i did this i did this on my on my other mac uh second page This is good. This is good. Um, I'm going to bring this up, and this will be about where I start on the next time I do one of these kingdom. This will turn your world upside down. Let me go back to my screen share. And what it says here is an amazing and incredible verse. Confirm your, your calling. Let me get that. Your calling and your election. Okay, my calling, my election. I was called and I became, when I received Jesus Christ, I became one of the elect. Okay, the chosen ones. It says here in Second Peter, the first chapter and the third verse, um, that his divine power has granted to us, us from the least to the, in the eyes of the world, from the least to the greatest, all of us are granted this stuff. To us, all things. All means all. There's no big I's and little U's. There's no favoritism. There's no partiality in the kingdom of God. But if you don't know it, you can't gain access. You, you have access to it. But if, if you don't know what all what our, all things are, you won't be experiencing them. You'll be holding experience from history. Okay? Old history, even recent history. You're experiencing life through history and not his story. You're not operating out of kingdom. You're operating out of the world. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Not some things. It, it's a granting in the package. It's a granting in grace. Listen to this. Through the knowledge. We have to to have knowledge of the word right now in these times in these days with false prophets and deceivers running amok it is a time like no other to know him and you know him through the discipleship and the exposition of the word of god there are people that are preaching false gospels and false messages and they're leading many astray through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. I'm going to go on here from verse 4. And this, oh, I got to bring this. We're going to highlight this here. You know what? I'm just going to do what I got to do. Because this is solid Bible teaching. Okay. By which, okay, his glory, his excellence, he gave us all things. Through knowledge, we got to know what we have. I don't have my phone in here right now, but um, there's still things I don't know about my iPhone. There's still things I don't know about this computer or about the how the everything. I don't know everything about the studio. I'm I'm growing in my knowing, by which He granted to us His precious and very great promises. You, we have to know what the promises are. That's what we can have. That's what we can hope for. That's what we can stand on. That's what we can rely on. 
not, he didn't grant us his great and precious prophets. People are relying more on these so-called self-proclaimed prophets and apostles than they do on the promises of God. That's what's killing us. That's what's killing us. It's killing people and leading many astray. So that through them, through what? Through the through through what the prophets say? Through through what the essentially people are trying to do fortune telling in the church. They're trying to act like clairvoyants and mediums. Because as soon as they said, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord didn't say it and it didn't come to pass, they proved they're not prophets. So that through them, his promises and your knowledge, you may become partakers of the divine nature. The nature of the divine. Can you imagine being able to be a participant of the nature of the divine? But before Christ, what were you a, what were you a participant of? What were you a partaker of? Probably a little bit of the nature of your mom, a little bit of the nature of your dad. You probably act a little bit like your brother, a little bit like your sister. You had a whole bunch of folks in you. Or maybe if if you didn't have any of those folks in you, you grew up in 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 a in a foster care or without your dad or without your mom or your dad, you know. Uh you became a partaker of 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 the loss, of the lack. Maybe you lived your whole life feeling like you were an outcast and rejected. It says we can be partakers of the divine nature through Christ, through being born again, having escaped the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desires. Praise God. Now I want to, I want to sum this up and I really need to get off here because most people don't listen that long anyway. Look, here's what it is. The world didn't receive Jesus either. They didn't believe in him. The Bible says in, in the book of the gospel of John, he went to his own and his own received him not. But to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become a child of God, a child born not of natural descent or of a human decision or a husband's will, but a child born of God. No one can take it away from you. No one can take away from you what God gives to you. So if, if, like I said, he went to his own people. He went to the religious establishment that God instituted through Israel. He went to the Jewish people, the religious leaders, the political leaders, the, the, the people. They didn't like Jesus because Jesus would not fit in any one of their cliques. See what I'm saying? They had all these different cults and cultures and sects and beliefs and teachers who were not teaching the word of God, who did not even recognize the Messiah. They rejected him. But this was part of God's foreknowledge and plan. The Bible reveals clearly that Jesus is the incarnation of God, the exact representation of his being, that Jesus, God, and the Father are one. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by. But when you received Jesus, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become a child of God. That's the gospel of the kingdom. You're, you are going to be in a kingdom, not in not in churchianity, not in a church. Okay? Now, now it doesn't mean you can't operate, but the 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 cultural view of Christianity is a lesser vision than the kingdom of God. And I will show that to you. I will demonstrate that to you. I will demonstrate to you how the culture has crept in to the to there is one church. There is one church in the world, ecclesia, the ecclesia, ecclesia, whichever way you pronounce it. That's what Jesus said. On this rock I will build my ecclesia, my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. One of the most astounding questions people ask me is, there's one God, how can there be so many churches? And I tell them, there's not. There's one church. And that church are those who are set aside. Their lives are set aside for the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, people don't live like that. And there's there's all kinds of things that happen. The competition, a rivalry, um, one-upmanship, one-downmanship. And the kingdom is not operating according to God's design. We'll see that. 
but we have the ways, the means, and the practices of the world inside of the of most most places. Um, but we're supposed to not operate like we're supposed to operate on a whole other level. But most people haven't even began to see, began to hear, or their minds haven't even grasped what the kingdom of God. Well, I pray that you have, and if you've never received and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you feel the weight of uncertainty, of conflict, of oppression, of depression, of, of instability, of personal identity stability, receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Call out to him. Call out to the Lord that you might be saved, that your sins may be forgiven. The Holy Spirit may come upon you and seasons of refreshing can come upon you because you are born again. Peace and love in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Until next time, Brother Rob Wilson. And post a comment. If anyone sees this message through any means and receives Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, post a comment. Let us know. Or email me at kingdomlifepeoria at gmail.com so that we can be in contact and you can become in grow in knowledge of what it means to be a child of God. In his precious name, beloved, peace and love in Jesus. Amen.